Welcome to this lecture about the basics of type 1 and 2 errors. A type 1 error is an error we make if we incorrectly reject a true null hypothesis, whereas a type 2 error is an error we make if we do not reject a false null hypothesis. To understand the meaning of a type 1 error, we'll here consider the following example. Suppose that population A and B represent people living in two different populations. One has measured the body height of all individuals in the two populations, which means that we know the population mean body height. In this example, the mean body heights of the two populations are exactly the same. Let's say that there is an investigator who would like to know if people living in population A are shorter or taller compared to the ones living in population B. The investigator does not know that the body heights of the two populations are already known. The investigator therefore plans a study and defines the null and the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis states that the population mean body height is the same in population A and B. Whereas the alternative hypothesis states that there is a difference between the mean body heights in the two populations. Remember that we already know that the null hypothesis is true, whereas the investigator does not know this. Since the investigator would like to know if the null hypothesis is true or false, he takes a sample from the two populations. He decides to use a significance level of 0 0.05 and a sample size of four individuals from each population. The investigator then selects four random individuals from population A and four random individuals from population B. He measures the body heights of the four individuals from each population and calculates the mean of the two samples. Since the four individuals are picked at random from each population, it is normal that the samples have different mean values, although the populations have identical means. In this case, the four individuals in sample A happen to be a bit taller compared to the ones in sample B. The investigator then uses an unpaired t-test to compute the p-value. The p-value was computed to 0.2, which is larger than the significance level. This means that the investigator does not reject the null hypothesis. Since the investigator does not reject the null hypothesis, it draws the conclusion that there is no significant difference in the mean body height of people living in population A and B. Since we know that the two populations that the investigator sampled from had identical means, we know that the investigator has drawn the correct conclusion since it did not reject the true null hypothesis. We call this a true negative result because the conclusion by an investigator is true and that no significant difference was found. The investigator should therefore be happy. Let's consider a case where the investigator was unlucky. Due to chance, the investigator happened to pick four individuals from population A that were much taller than the average mean height of that population. And when he picked four random individuals from population B, those happened to be much shorter than the mean body height of that population. As before, he measured the height of the eight individuals and calculated the mean body height of the two samples. The investigator then used an unpaired t-test and computed the p-value to 0.006, which is now smaller than the significance level of 0.05. The investigator therefore rejects the null hypothesis and concludes that there is a significant difference in average body height between the two populations. The investigator has therefore made a type 1 error because he just rejected the null hypothesis even though it is true. Remember that we know that the two populations have identical means. This result is therefore called a false positive result because the detected significant difference between the two populations is false. The investigator should therefore be unhappy. The problem is that the investigator is probably still happy and will report the result of a significant difference because he doesn't know that he's just as committed a type 1 error. To summarize what we have learned so far, 
when the null hypothesis is true, we might either make the correct decision by not rejecting the null hypothesis, or we might incorrectly reject the true null hypothesis, which means that we have committed a type 1 error. Suppose that we, in this example, know that people in population A are generally taller than the ones in population B. The mean height of the ones in population A is 170 cm, whereas the mean height of the ones in population B is 160 cm. In this example, we therefore know that the null hypothesis is false, and that the alternative hypothesis is true because the mean body height in population A is different from the one in population B. Same as before, the investigator wants to test if there is a difference in body height between individuals in population A and B. He therefore again selects four random individuals from population A and four random individuals from population B. Note that the two samples are representative samples in this case because the observations are spread around the population means. The investigator measures the body heights and calculates the mean heights in the two samples. He again uses an unpaired t-test and computes the p-value. The p-value is in this example equal to 0.002, which is less than the significance level of 0.05. The investigator therefore rejects the null hypothesis and draws the conclusion that the mean body height of the two populations are different. People living in population A are generally taller than the ones living in population B. This result is called a true positive result, because it is true that there is a difference in the mean body height between the two populations. The investigator should therefore be happy, because the discovered difference he has observed between the two populations is correct. However, suppose that the investigator was unlucky in the following example, where he happened to pick four individuals from population A that were relatively short, and four individuals from population B that were relatively tall. Due to chance, the eight individuals from population A and B therefore happened to have about the same body heights. The investigator then measures the body heights and uses an unpaired t-test to compute the p-value. The p-value in this example was 0.7, which is greater than the significance level. The investigator does therefore not reject the null hypothesis, even though it is false. The investigator has just committed type 2 error, since it did not reject the false null hypothesis. This result is called a false negative result, because it is false that there is no difference in the average body height between two populations. The investigator should therefore be unhappy, because he has just committed type 2 error. The problem is that he doesn't know that he has committed type 2 error, so he is probably happy anyway and reports his results. To summarize so far, if the null hypothesis is false, there can be two possible outcomes. We did not reject the null hypothesis even though it is false, which means that we have committed type 2 error or we correctly reject the false null hypothesis. We can summarize this lecture about type 1 and 2 errors by the following table. When we perform an experiment and make a decision, four possible results might be obtained. If the p-value is less than the significance level, which is commonly set to 0 0.05, we then might correctly reject the false null hypothesis or commit a type 1 error by rejecting a true null hypothesis. We'll get the false positive result if we reject a true null hypothesis, which means that we have committed a type 1 error. Or we'll get the true positive result if we reject a false null hypothesis. Since we usually do not have information about the population, only information from our sample, we will never know if our result is a false positive or a true positive result. This is why we say that there is a significant difference because we can never be 100% sure that the difference we have observed is due to chance from sampling or actually represents a real difference unless we measure the whole population. In comparison, 
If the p-value is greater than the significance level of 0 0.05, then we might correctly accept the null hypothesis if it is true, or we might commit a type 2 error if the null hypothesis is false. We will get the false negative result if we do not reject a false null hypothesis. A false negative result means that we have committed a type 2 error since we have not rejected the null hypothesis even though it is false. And finally, we will get the true negative result if we do not reject a true null hypothesis. This means that out of the four outcomes, two may result in the correct conclusion, whereas two out of the four outcomes may result in either a type 1 or a type 2 error. Finally, we we'll have a look at another example. Let's say that the drug company has developed a drug and like to test if this drug can reduce the symptoms for a certain disease. They recruit the number of patients where half of them get the new drug and the other half get the fake pill to control for possible placebo effects. Suppose that the drug has no effect at all, which means that the null hypothesis is true. Then we would like that the study results in a true negative result. However, if the results would turn out just by chance that more people in a drug group would have a reduced symptoms compared to the placebo group, we might draw the conclusion that the drug has an effect even though it is useless. This error would be quite serious because we might begin to give patients a pill that is no better than a fake pill. Another serious mistake could happen if the drug actually has an important clinical effect on the patients. However, due to chance, the drug group happened to include some people who did not respond at all to the drug. In this case, the drug company would make a type 2 error, which means that the drug actually has an effect, but the company cannot prove it. This would mean that they have wasted time and money to develop the drug, and that the patients will not get the drug even though the drug might be helpful. The main goal of this kind of study is to show that the drug actually has a true effect that helps the patients. To get the true positive result is usually the goal of most studies. In the next lectures, we will discuss the probability of making a type 1 and a type 2 error. We will also discuss statistical power and sample size. Thanks for watching.